I'm Mark Kaiser and we're here at Safari Club International. Now this next place is some place, some destination I've always wanted to go. Simon Kyle Little Australian Big Game Safaris. I let the cat out of the bag. Australia. <laughs> what is so unique about this and why would someone want to go to Australia? Because I do. Well Mark, I'll tell you, I've had this concession 27 years and it still excites me today. I, it's so wild, it's 2.2 million acres, all under my control, every bit of it. Aborigines gave me this, uh, stemming back from a dad who was an early, literally an early explorer in the 1940s. The Aboriginals knew him, there were no buffalo then, they've moved in over the last 100 years or so, but um, you know, dad made this contact and long lasting connections with these people and they've said we don't know what this hunting's about but you're your son of Sid Kyle Little you're welcome come into our lands and when I got in there I'd hunted buffalo to the west for years and when I came in I tell you when I saw the coastal flats the buffalo the wild rivers the islands and just millions of acres and nothing and no people zero not even the aborigines themselves I mean I just fell in love with it and uh, <laughs> From then on, I'm telling you, I, I just couldn't let go. It's, I've been out there, it's a wonder, I even got married and had kids because <laughs> I could not get enough of it and I still can't get enough of it today. Great, so, great. Um, yeah, no, it's been great. And to, to me, um, the, you know, in Australia, we've got very little to hunt compared to Africa. But the hunting out here, because of that sheer remoteness, and I do run a, a safari um, camp in Tanzania, not for hunting, and I've been all over Tanzania and there's nothing in Tanzania that compares to this wilderness place that I've got here in Australia. So I know I need to look after it. Cool. And, and there's some other things people could hunt and not only that, just tourist stuff they can enjoy there, right? A absolutely. We've, uh, we've got big ox, these wild ox. Uh, yeah, everyone talks about the buffalo. Wild ox were brought in in the 1830s like the buffalo. Um, the English tried to settle with Hereford cattle. They all died. They needed some resilient animal um, that would take the tropical heat and the conditions of swamps. So these ox, uh, unlike ranch cattle that you know are just basically cows gone wild, these ox are living in secluded pockets on the coast. Hard to find, need to know how to find them, but that, that's where experience comes in. But they're a great hunt and um, anyone that's ever engaged one has said it was worth every bit and I'll tell you what, just as exciting as any buffalo hunt or even the bantang for that matter. So that's kind of unique to this area. Uh, wild boar, there's dingoes uh, and wallabies, they're not uh, huntable but they're there to see. Bird life's incredible, lots of different waders and swamp birds and cockatoos and termite mounds, it goes on and on. Escarpment, we have waterfalls, the, the place is just a, it's like a little Garden of Eden out in the middle of Arnhem Land and uh, even Australians, they don't hunt so much as say Americans or Germans, but they will, they, there's a big demand to come and actually see this area, so. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so if people need more information, where can they get it? Well, we have a website, uh, it's a honey website, but you can see the, the, the landscape there, it's, uh, you know, australianbiggamesafaris.com.au, you can view it on that. Um, and I, um, I don't have my tourist website up. I, I basically, it's all word of mouth my business over 30 years. So, uh, perfect. you want to come visit us, we'll show you whether you're a tourist or a hunter. You'll get to see the whole deal. All right, you heard it there. And the next time you see me, I might be having one of those crocodile Dundee hats and a big knife and hanging out with Simon. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs>